Here we have the Sonata C major, Opus 53 of Beethoven. It is the Waldstein Sonata, nicknamed after the person it was dedicated to, which was uh, Count Ferdinand von Waldstein, who himself was a very interesting character. He had supported Beethoven throughout his early years in Bonn, sending him to Vienna to study with Haydn in order to gain the spirit of Mozart obviously a great uh, connoisseur of the piano. He himself uh, fought Napoleon at great length and joined the British Army in reading about him. He also served in India in the British Army. He left in 1812 and became very impoverished, dying, uh, I believe, 1824. Uh, not a very successful career in terms of his, his accomplishments monetarily, but certainly Beethoven felt so strongly about him that he dedicated this, this revolutionary sonata. The sonata is interesting on many levels. I, I think the influence of the Erhard piano, which is quite unknown in Beethoven's history, uh, Haydn had received in 1801 an Erhard sent to him from Paris, and Beethoven thought so highly of the instrument that, in, that he ordered one in August of 1803. So the qualities of the Erhard, which was a French instrument with an English accent, I think were particularly uh, noticeable in this particular sonata. And the colors, the pianistic colors especially, are so extraordinary. The use of the, the repetition, the use of the tremolo, and certainly the, the pianissimo sound, which Beethoven really exploits in this particular sonata. And of course, the use of the pedal, which we will go on into later on. But I find the, the work, uh, it's one of his most famous sonatas, and rightly so. Uh, I believe that it is often played much too fast because it, there's so much music going on that rushing through it does not make a lot of sense to me. Very often it's played with it. And then it is slowing down when you get to the second theme. which I object to. I, I believe that there should be one mean tempo with flexibility and all the, the freedoms of interpretation. But I really think that this uh, tempo does not need to be faster. And I don't think this, the rushing serves the piece. Certainly it's allegro con brio, and I think the con brio can certainly be held in the excitement of the tension that you have. Um, let me show you once again a relaxed wrist uh, not letting the keys rise too highly, using the unicorta pedal, and playing with a very deliberate sort of orchestral uh, pop, 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 with a short bow of the string. And one of the things that is so important is the mode of da da da. He has a brave and the eighth note and then the quarter note. And that is constantly repeated and it becomes a very strong motive in the piece. So, so. completely revolutionary, of course, is going down the whole step and starting the theme over again in a new key. Quite extraordinary. Uh, also, the use of the half step is always being used. And then he repeats it with the tremolo. Uh, So the, the beautiful rotation, and don't forget, you cannot let the keys come up. You have to sort of play the pianissimo. Very lightly. And get the, the pop, 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 get the direction of the sound as well as to being mechanical. Get it? So you always have a direction and a beautiful, elegant kind of melody. The melody is constantly being reinforced. He 
goes from the A minor using the Phrygian relationship into B major. Once again, if it's so fast, you, you lose the whole melodic content of this music. And you don't need a lot of pedal either. Going into his B major. Setting up actually to his big second theme, is it, which is an E major. He goes from C major to E major. It's not very common in a, a, uh, a major, C major composition, but revolutionary for Beethoven. <laughs> Gorgeous with the decrescendo, the staccato, and how he breaks up the rhythm. He doesn't do it in any kind of conventional way, but breaks it up. And be sure, lead yourself into the 